Welcome back guys. In this video, we're going to be breaking some scenes down from SEAL Team CBS uh, Season 2, Episode 6. Jason and his team link up with some Mexican Marines and they're going to take on one of the most wanted uh, drug cartels or an individual. <clears throat> so let's get going. Right here, they're at an unknown staging place. Now, something to consider here. Okay, first and foremost, we don't know how far they're out from the target. But nonetheless, one of the things we experienced overseas, there were times we were hours outside of the target and just random people who were being paid saw us going in that direction. They raised the alarm basically and called in and to the people that we were going after, oddly enough, and they got away multiple times. Okay, we had to come up with some pretty gnarly stuff to uh, get by these people, get by the people who were paid off at the checkpoints, things of that nature. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people don't realize how powerful the cartels are. They have people all over just sitting there getting paid with cell phones. If they see something like this, two vehicles coming in that are fairly close, <clears throat> um, can definitely uh, give you away quicker than you want, okay? How close should vehicles be? Well, that really depends on a couple factors, okay? The closer we get to target, we're going to get a little bit faster. We're going to push up on our vehicles. The further out we are, we can relax just a little bit. But the overall concept is be in a position to where even friendlies or just um, locals can't get in between you and the vehicle by accident, okay? You don't want to shut the convoy down. So, here's another concern. Like I said, we don't know how far out they are, but again, from my experience, especially things that happen in Mexico, um, them going in the direction of this really powerful cartel leader or rep, you know, there's a lot of people out there walking around looking for stuff like this, and they got the windows down. Okay, it's light outside, the windows up, they're dark, it's gonna be hard to see inside but we can still see outside, okay? There's no reason for their windows to be down. All right, so they're getting closer to the target. As you can see, they're a little bit tighter. They're not moving as fast. Coming around that corner, they are. And again, the number one vehicle windows were down as well. They got their uniforms hanging out, the patches, okay? The helmets, the mics, and you're literally dismounting the vehicles. So, it's not to say you haven't already been given away, but it's a guarantee somebody's gonna see you with the windows down. I can't reiterate that enough. Next thing here, the guys get out. They're getting ready to start a foot patrol, obviously, because they're dismounting. And by the way they're getting out, really relaxed. Um, it, it could be a sign that they're still maybe a mile away from Target or something like that, but usually that's not the case in an urban environment. Too dangerous to be away from your vehicles. Um, so with that being said, you know, if you're gonna put a mask on your balaclava and pull it up for your identity, it should have already have been done in the vehicle. Um, this guy's, this Marine's got it, one hand on the rifle, you know, one's at high port here, one on the SEAL team guys. Uh, really no security, so as soon as you dismount, okay, it's on if you haven't already been contacted. You need to be ready to rock and roll. Everything's set. I'm not putting my helmets on. I'm not loading my gun. I'm not pulling my mask up. You're holding security as soon as you get out. I really like how they came into this opening together, back to back. Really, really important that you do this. You want to cover each other's back. And... In urban environments, mountain environments, man, there's so many people. There's in structures and places to hide. There's absolutely no way for you to cover everything. So when you're doing something like this, you're going to miss, you know, you're going to miss some places. The overall goal is move as fast as you need to, okay? Cover as much as you can, and you're going to give it up. You give it up and you're relying on your teammates who you train with to go ahead and pick that area up, all right? 
Now, my only concern here is obviously they came out pointing their guns toward this guy that is in this muscle shirt. He doesn't seem aggressive right now. He's beaten on the trash can as a warning sign, which tells us that he's not a friendly on any level. I um, mean, you can see right now not a single person. Uh, it's not to say we're going to stop the path of movement, but I need to be glancing over here, at least out of my peripheral, just to see if these guys are going to start shooting. Because you can see a guy standing in the door. How do we know he doesn't have a gun? The entire team's going to move past because we're moving past. We're moving forward very fast. Rear security is going to have a hard time walking backwards, looking backwards. Um, he could just start popping people from the rear. So just something to think about. So it looks like they pick up the pace. Once again, these guys come around the corner just flawlessly. Excellent movement. So we've got the guy here on the right. We've got the guy behind him who's holding security up here. We have the guy up front in front of Jason. Jason's got his gun at the low ready. Okay. Um, if he may visually see, hey, this is a this whole structure has no windows. What am I going to be holding? You know, stucco or brick, there's no reason for me to hold him. Maybe he's on comms. There's a lot of things that could be going on, but he's not working right now. You can see that his hands isn't on the comms, his gun, both hands are on the gun, he's moving. Maybe he's looking further ahead to see what's going on because that's his job, all right? And that, that's something to really process is at some point, Everyone should come off their gun and get out of the fight every so often and just get a good look of the surroundings. And I'm not talking 10, 20, 30 seconds. I'm not, I'm not even talking five seconds. I'm just talking a really quick glance of what's happening and what's going on. All right, so here you go. He's, he's got his comms. And I want you to look at this right here. Now I know this is Hollywood. Um, I want you to look at the camera position, okay? The camera is pretty much in between this uh, patrol line and this patrol line up against the walls. Jason's on the comms, and what does he do with his rifle? Okay, if you look right here, his rifle is perfectly parallel with the wall. It's not angled in this way towards the camera. It's not angled back towards the wall. So what does that mean happen to that number one man in front of him? straight up his back. I understand it's Hollywood. Um, ideally, he would either come out to the wall if I'm coming up, I hit the wall and then I come up, or I'm gonna go in between this, these two point men, right up the middle, okay? It's a narrow opening, but that is tactically sound. There'll be some people who tell you flagging and or sweeping, you know, whatever, you know, it happens. I won't tell you it won't happen, but I can tell you that I never experienced it. And I don't know anybody else that our team experienced it. Um, you can run these operations 100% just as effective um, not flagging as people flagging. It's not even a question. All right, so right here, boom, this is a great example. Okay, so they come around this corner. And I believe that's Jason again. Look what he does, okay? He doesn't go up his teammates back. Obviously, he's, his body is starting to shift to start changing directions, but his barrel comes up in between these two front men. Great example of what should have happened, either that or back towards the wall. All right, so now here's something that I don't like, okay? Right here, you'll see these guys on the right side, not a single one of them are holding back in this direction behind them. Okay. Once again, you're in enemy territory. You don't know who is who. Um, you want to cover every aspect you can. And once again, you're not going to be able to cover everything. I may have a 60 degree field of fire and it could be 60 feet tall, but there's absolutely nobody focused on that. N no one even looked. Okay. So, tactically sound, bad juju. Good breach. Good entry as a whole. Okay, and I want you to look right here. Up to this point, not a single person 
cleared to the right. Okay. <clears throat> Maybe they changed the SOP that the first two guys were going to do center fed and then we're going to go straight to the door with the breacher. Okay. Time on target could make that SOP change, but nonetheless, everything in essence has to be cleared. Okay. And I'm not talking about every little nook and cranny. We want to glance at it, but to miss something that big, it's, it's a uh, bad. Now we could say, well, that's the camera view. You know, if you watch that again, what you're going to see is you're going to see that number one and two guy go in number three. All right. Not a single one of them has looked to the right. Now the camera swings. All right, and everyone's headed straight towards the door, okay? Good breach with the shotgun overall. Now we have Jason crashing this uh, opening, which is fine. But if I have a small team, one or two, okay? Maybe three or four, you know? And I have to take two guys and hold security. I may have to crash and be one of the entry guys. But as you can see, he literally, doors breached, you have the staircase, you have what's lower, you can take some rounds, okay? So he crashes with no security, all right? What should happen with this many guys is he's stacked up on this door like this. There should be another guy holding inside that door just in case somebody pops out. And the reason why I say this is one, it's tactically sound, two, it's happened a lot. Okay, the element of, su element of surprise is gone. If these people haven't been noti notified by cell phones, radios, they dang sure were notified when the trash can was being beat. They were dang sure notified when they breached that gate. Okay, so if they're ready to fight, it's only a matter of time. Okay, so definitely there should have been someone else holding security there. And, and honestly, if... That's the way they want to run it, SOPs. By all means, go for it. But what's more efficient is the guy who crashes, he doesn't have his rifle in hand. He's crashing, he's backing out, and this gunner is going to be the entry man, or one of them. Because he's already got sights inside that room. There's no reason for him to give it up. All right, there you go. Great example right there. Okay, so... <laughs> So what's the what's the difference between all of this happening, the door being breached, the gate being breached, and then Jason crash, and then they go in, and all of a sudden this guy's here. What if he was there a little bit sooner? Jason would probably be dead because camera-wise, there was nobody holding inside this door. All right, so here's something I don't like, and I'm going to show you here in just a minute. You got this this outside guy here he's just at low ready and the number one guy he's covering the entire staircase okay almost guaranteed when you go up a set of stairs it branches left and right and sometimes even straight okay so for one guy to cover all of that that hasn't even been covered yet is just asinine especially when this guy is not even in the fight okay and once again, I don't know all the SOPs. They do change. Uh, maybe they're saying time on target's more important than a little bit slower movement. So they're going to <clears throat> give up some safety to increase the or decrease the time on target, which is a possibility. All right. But what I want you to watch here, this is me with a student of mine clearing a condo. Okay. We've already cleared the lower half. <clears throat> Now, when you're clearing two guys, again, somebody's just got to cover as much as you can. So he's, right here, he's covering not only that staircase, he's covering the door or on this floor, okay, out of his peripheral. And the only thing that I feel where he made a mistake is, look right here, he drops his gun, okay? There's no reason for him to drop the gun. His gun should still be up this staircase because now I'm holding on this door, all right? Even though he can see somebody in that peripheral, okay, by the time he comes back up and gets in that fight, we both may lose, even in armor because our sides are exposed. So I'm holding this glass door now. He's holding 
that staircase and what he's going to do out his peripheral as soon as he get close to that door he's going to break the gun up and do his entry so through that whole run that's really the only mistake that he made although our guns were unloaded at this time the reason why he's sitting here like this he didn't feel comfortable pointing the gun up in the direction of the cameraman okay but realistically right now his gun should be up that staircase because at the end of the day just like that one guy was coming down the stairs, we don't know if they've heard us, even though we haven't shot yet technically. All right, maybe they heard some noise and they're coming down and they're right there at that uh, uh, level, okay? So the moment you're exposed, you're in those sights or at least looking over the sights, okay? All right, right here, so he starts coming up. We've got a lot of glass windows. He's covering this way. I'm gonna cover the door that we know is up there okay he shifts position and i'm going to take the glass so this is how we cover as much as we possibly can all right and i want to show you something here and this student of mine is a phenomenal student but i want you to see what he does so he's so used to just clearing left and right in cqb once he gets to the top what he did is he's holding the door I'm holding the door and then he comes back to the left. Well, when you get to the top of the staircase, you're going to see there's just a brick wall. So the question is, what are you pointing your gun at? It was 100% just out of a habit. And I asked him at the end of that, I said, why did you do that? He goes, I don't know. Okay, this is a subconscious issue that when you go into a room and you clear left and right and you build it on such a subconscious level, um, these things will happen. So what that was telling me that he was not intelligently processing what he was doing. And a live shoot house, extremely, extremely dangerous. Well, this was a long time ago, so the student has came a long way. He was very good at this point. This is actually the first couple run-throughs that we had in CQB um, as far as his condo. So overall, he did really good. So right there, you just see how I nodded my head. Out of his peripheral, he's like this. He can still see my head nod, okay? Typically, the head nod is I'm going, but he's slowing down. I'm just letting you know, hey, I'm here. I could have reached in and grabbed his thigh, grabbed his shoulder, squeezed him. I could have verbally commanded him if we were already in a gunfight, whatever the case may be. But there's a million ways to do it, okay? All right, so as you see, there is at the top of this staircase, it goes, there's a door and then it breaks left and it breaks right. So this one guy, he's just coming up those stairs nonchalant with his gun not in the fight, okay? Walk backwards, it is a technique that you have to practice at and every staircase is different. All right, two things here. First and foremost, always wear safety glasses. Usually if you go to these poorer countries like this, they may not have them, but for you, even on a gun range, you know, all it takes is a small piece of metal, a piece of wood, it will put your eyeballs out. Now you see this gunner, this seal shooting through the door. Sometimes that's realistic. All right, so I have a big, big, big issue with this, this right here. It's, uh, I get the Hollywood aspect, but bear with me, okay? We're coming up these stairs. We have a door, which there was a guy in that we killed. And then there's left and then right, it tees off. Okay, so this Mexican Marine takes some type of dust would get something in his eyes whatever maybe air who knows so the seal is standing in the doorway he's standing right there at the top of the staircase he throws him a bottle of water which i have no problem with and then well let's go and then we start clearing again okay if this is the case and this guy is injured you grab him you bring him into that cleared room you shut that door you tell him where the bottle of water is, you hold security, or do something like that, because he's ineffective right now. So it's not tactically sound for me to try and hold 
left and right. And it dang sure isn't tactically sound for me to sit in this door jam checking on a guy. Okay. So that's definitely a Hollywood move. Okay. And all right, there you go. Perfect example. This stuff is stage, but imagine me or you, whoever, coming up the staircase, shotgun blast comes through the door, we level him, we clear, and then we're standing outside and we're outside of this, in this hallway, this threshold talking. My question to you is, why did this guy just now start coming to the door to fight? He would have already came out the door if his mindset was, I'm going to go out and fight. It's stage. But point being is if somebody's ready to open that door and fight, you're both dead. At least one of you. You may survive, but you don't want to put yourself in that situation. It doesn't make sense. Because we don't know who's in this uh, room. It hasn't been cleared yet. You never assume. There could be zero. There could be five. There could be women and children. Who knows? All right, here's a, a great example of what I talked about in the last video when, they, when the guys are on top of the mountain of the psychology or human behavior of overexposing, okay? The two enemy, okay, up here, once again, it's Hollywood. But they're showing you exactly what a human would typically do in these situations. They've overexposed over half of their body just to get the guns in the fight, okay? And there's no reason for that. All right, so... I'll go right back um, to this. I won't say it right or wrong, okay? Because the people in charge, they're not technically shooters, okay? They're putting Jason in a shooting position, but technically someone in his position is command and control. That's not to say they won't get to fight, but most of the time they're command and control. They're the bigger pitcher guys. So what Jason is doing right now is more than likely just trying to get a better idea of what they're facing. But nonetheless, if you look at the guy that's in front of him, look how concealed he is, over half his body. Okay, and the guy on the left, he's fighting, you know, back this way, and he's concealed for the most part as well, not near as much. But Jason has 90% of his body exposed, okay? There's no reason to do that. If I'm just trying to see what's going on, all I'm going to do is I'm going to peek around this gunner's shoulder. Okay, he's got armor on, he's got a helmet, I've got a helmet. You know, there's risks that have to be taken, but we don't need to overexpose ourselves when we don't need to. That doesn't make sense on at any level. So they did a really great job of fanning out right here, a lot harder to hit. Instead of being in patrol order, you know, a single file or single column. Overall, you know, these are just smaller things, I would say. Um, I, don't, I don't like how, you know, when they get back to the vehicle, um, they just nonchalantly, a couple of them hold security, you know, the, the commanders of the Mexican Marine, this guy right here. He's just sitting there, another guy sitting there. A lot of these guys were doing the same thing that they did when they got out of the vehicle. Absolutely nothing. I mean, you just got into a gunfight. Okay, maybe they're all trying to escape. Maybe they're dead. Maybe they're ticked off and they're getting ready to, you know, come forth and get into the fight again. Okay, this was one of the biggest issues that we had in the military in general. Okay, when we get back to this so-called staging point, everybody went admin. Okay, you don't go admin until you are back on base, your gear's cleaned, intel is turned in, you know, everything's done. And then you mentally go admin. Even when you're in the vehicles, you're mentally ready to fight. You're not lean back in the chair with your eyes closed, None of that stuff. You're ready to fight. Okay. So some simple stuff. This one had um, a little bit more stuff that I didn't like overall. But once again, you know, tactics change. Uh, nobody's perfect. What makes the team so effective 
is the guy's ability to work together under these conditions. Um, tactics are great, but um, you can have the best tactics and a screwed up team and everybody will die. So hope you guys liked the video. Please like, subscribe, share, comment, and as always, have a great day and God bless.